Hi everybody, this is Brad from Warm Glass. Today we're going to be doing a video that looks at smushed glass. The way smushed glass works is you start with a stack of glass, an arrangement like the one you see right here, and then you take that, place it in the kiln, sandwich it between two kiln shelves, and fire it, and voila, you can come out with an assortment of different looks depending on the initial arrangement. The smushing process makes the piece thinner than it was before the firing. In most cases, a smushed piece emerges from the kiln approximately two millimeters thick. That's about the thickness of an American nickel. For today's project, we're going to use the smushing process to make this bowl. We'll go through all the steps from start to finish. And if you want more details, check out our smushed glass PDF, available at the Warm Glass website. But before we can lay out the glass, we'll need to prepare our kiln for the firing. We want a fresh coating of kiln wash. Thin fire paper or fiber paper won't work well for this process. Okay, make sure you kiln wash not only your kiln shelf, but the shelf that's going to be placed on top of your piece that you're trying to smush. In addition to kiln washing, it's really important that the bottom shelf have a lot of post under it. If there aren't enough posts, it could crack from the weight of the shelves on top. Now that our shelves are prepared, it's time to prepare the glass. For this project, which you'll remember involves the steps needed to create the bowl, we'll start with a stack of glass squares, each square slightly smaller than the other. They're stacked, smaller squares on top, then skewed slightly, like a spiral. The next step is to place the squares in the kiln, weigh them down with a second kiln shelf, and add some more shelves or posts. Then fire. When firing, we must be careful to go slow enough to minimize temperature variations between the glass and the kiln shelves. Because of the amount of shelf and post material in the kiln, it will take longer than normal for the piece to cool. But when it does emerge from the kiln, you'll see that it has changed dramatically. The piece is spread out so that it's larger than it was before it was fired. The edges have become rounded rather than square. The force of the smooshing process has also blurred the lines between the individual squares of glass, making the reactions between the glasses used even more pronounced. This view of the piece before and after the firing shows how dramatically the smooshing process has changed the piece. Not only have the colors changed, but the smooshing has added a sense of depth and movement that aren't in the arrangement before the firing. When the piece emerges from the kiln, it may have some kiln wash residue or even stuck on kiln wash. This can be easily cleaned off, either by hand or by sandblasting. If you want your finished piece to have a mat, rather than a shiny final appearance, you can just clean, then go ahead and slump. But if you prefer a shinier appearance, then you'll want to clean the piece, fire polish, and then slump. Our piece was fire polished prior to slumping. The best thing about the smushing process is that it's not limited to just stacking squares on top of each other. Other arrangements can create even more interesting pieces, like the one shown here. For a complete discussion of the smooshing process, as well as information about these variations and more, be sure to check out our PDF on smooshing glass in the kiln. Please like our videos and subscribe.